Today we are going to read the book, The Kids Who Changed the World, 10 Amazing Science Stories. And this book, I'm going to look in here because the, the author's information is inside of here. It is by Alexandru Namasco, and the cover design is by Anastasia Ermolina, and the illustrations are by Lire Ramos Castro and Anastasia Ermolina. So I thought that we should read this book because I've met so many amazing kids this year, so many of my amazing learners that I know are planning to change the world and that have become amazing scientists this year. I've seen so many people wonder and explore and learn and grow this year. So I thought it would be really cool for us to read a couple more stories about some kids that are doing the same kinds of things as you, or maybe they can inspire you too. So I love this quote here by Helen Exley. It says, books can be dangerous, the best one should be labeled, this could change your life. It's funny, things that change our lives, we don't sometimes know that they're changing our lives until later, or sometimes they're kind of bad things. Um, so, or, but I like how this is listed because books can change your life too. <laughs> There's a bunch of quotes here. It says, I really had a lot of dreams when I was a kid, and I think a great deal of that grew out of the fact that I had a chance to read a lot. Bill Gates said that. It's the head of Microsoft, or was. The next one says, a child who reads will be an adult who thinks. It's an author unknown. What do you think? Do you agree with that? Do you think that if you read as a kid, you're going to be an adult who thinks? I do. I like that discovery. And then it says, today a reader, tomorrow a leader. W. Fuselman. So interesting, you know, idea of reading. And, and I think, you know, as we go into summer break, it's important to remember that it is important to keep reading. And the cool thing about summer is you get to choose what you read as opposed to during the school year where uh, you might get forced to read certain things, maybe things you wouldn't choose and you like and or maybe things you don't like that you wouldn't choose. Um, but use that um, time in the summer to help learn and, and grow and explore, too, with books. Uh, we're going to read about some kids that changed the, the world. Um, so there's some different parts here. We have Aristotle with logics, Galileo Galilei, the planets, Isaac Newton, gravity, Michael Faraday, electricity, Charles Darwin, evolution, Louis Pasteur, pasteurization, James Clark Maxwell, magnetism, Nikola Tesla, electromagnetism, Marie Curie, x-ray, and Albert Einstein, the theory of relativity. And then there's a glossary. Um, I am going to be honest, we're not going to read every single story in here um, because there's lots. And um, I don't want to overdo it, but we're going to kind of explore some of the, the scientists that had an effect on the areas of science that we studied. So if there is somebody in here that you would like to read about and learn more about, um, I definitely recommend picking up this book from the library. Um, but we're just going to read some of these stories. So if you want to read some of the others, um, you can do that as well. So let's go ahead and see who is first. All right, the first scientist that we're going to read about is Galileo Galilei. Okay, so I don't know if you remember when we studied Earth and space, we talked about Galileo. But it says, was Galileo right about the Earth? Galileo Galilei was born in Pisa, Italy in 1564. His family worked hard, but they were very poor. Young Galileo was a very happy boy, spending time with his father filled his heart with much joy. His father was a composer, well-known in Italy. He wrote beautiful music and played the lute skillfully. You know what a lute is? L-U-T-E. There's a picture of a lute. Okay. 
Galileo became an accomplished lutenist himself. That's somebody who plays the lute. But he was more interested in the books on his shelf. So he went to a monastery to study in 1574 to learn math, physics, astrology, and much more. Okay, so I'm going to show you what those words mean because it's in a little glossary here. So it says monastery. You know what a monastery is? It says a house or a place where people meet or live for religious purpose. So he's studying somewhere with religion. And, and long ago, you know, religion really did have to do with education as well. Um, where we live here in the United States, we separate public schools from religion. But um, before that, a lot of, you know, and not every school does if you go to a private school. So um, I think if you go to public school your whole life, you kind of forget that. Um, there's a lot of aspects of religion in, in a lot of people's education as well. All right, let's look at astrology. That was the other one. That's what he studied. It says the science about the universe beyond the Earth's line. So that's what he studied. Galileo's father wanted him to be a doctor someday. So he sent him to the University of Pisa one day. But Galileo really wasn't interested in medicine. The sky and the stars was what he was interested in. So he invented an improved telescope in 1609. His new tool magnified things up to 20 times. This telescope seemed to bring the objects nearer so he could see the planets and stars much clearer. Galileo counted four moons around Jupiter and more stars than everyone thought that, they, that there were. And when he looked at Saturn, he saw interesting things. The planet Saturn is surrounded by some rings. <laughs> See, made lots of discoveries. Interesting. Galileo was amazed by all that he could see. His new telescope was really a great discovery. But when he heard of a famous scholar named Aristotle one day, Galilei wanted to hear what he had to say. But some things Aristotle said, didn't seem right. Gal Galileo thought about it every day, every night. He disagreed with Aristotle's law of gravity. This made many people very unhappy. Aristotle said a heavy object falls faster than a light one, and his theory was accepted by almost everyone. But Galileo didn't think that made sense at all, so he went to the top of a tower and let two objects fall. We did that this year. <laughs> they hit the ground at the same time, so Galileo knew that heavy objects don't fall faster than light objects do. During that time, people thought that, that is, it's right to think that Earth is at the center of night. They also thought that everything spins around us. For Galileo, this subject was worth to discuss. He thought that the Earth spins around the sun and proving his idea to everyone was such fun. Experiment with things and try with all your heart. Be a great thinker. There's no better time to start. So that's the story of Galileo. Um, I find it interesting. He didn't really follow what his parents wanted him to do and um, followed what he was inspired by, and that is what he's well known for today. So interesting story. We're going to read about another scientist that we've talked about a little bit this year, and that is Isaac Newton. And it says, what is gravity? Isaac Newton was born on Christmas Day in 1642 on a farm in England, far away. As a small child, he loved making inventions. Building sundials always caught his attention. We talked about those this year. Did anybody build one? I know I built one. Um, really interesting. But he couldn't go to school because his own mother wanted him to be a farmer, just like his father. Isaac hated the farming. Working wasn't a thrill. And to prove that he was smart, he built a windmill. He went back to school and proved to everyone that doing what you love is always much more fun. Isaac loved math, physics, and astronomy. Is that something you love too? I know some of you are like, oh, Mrs. Allforce, I don't really like science. Um, 
but that's okay. I, I want you to give it a good, a good uh, open mind and try it, and 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 be and be willing to try, and that's okay. Um, but you know, so, some people just say I hate it. Um, I think it's interesting. Some people that is their passion. They love some of those things that maybe you don't like, or maybe you like things that other people don't like. I think that's interesting. So at 18, he went to Cambridge University. One day when Isaac was gazing up at the sky, an apple fell down from a branch way up high. The apple hit him on top of his head. Why didn't it fall at an ankle, but straight down instead? He went to his house and started to study. When he figured it out, he told everybody, there is a great force that we all cannot see. I decided to name it. It's called gravity. Gravity is always pulling everything down. It keeps people and things attached to the ground. This was Newton's greatest discovery, but he wasn't scared to solve the next mystery. There were so many things he wanted to discover and also many mysteries he wanted to uncover. Some other discoveries that Isaac found were things that would affect everybody around like the laws of motion, one, two, and three, and all the colors of the rainbow that we can see. Isaac invented a reflecting telescope too. Now when looking at planets, we have a better view. Did you know he was responsible for all of that? I know we talked about him a little bit, but I don't know if I knew that he was responsible for all of that. Ooh, there's a little bit more of his story. Ooh. <laughs> his laws of motion are still used today when rockets blast off and fly far away. Isaac taught math at Oxford School too. His ideas were interesting, exciting, and new. His students always said, tell me more. They had never heard these ideas before. One day, Isaac Newton met Queen Anne. She wanted to meet this intelligent man. She came and laid a sword upon his shoulder. This is how Sir Isaac received his title of honor. So if a king or a queen um, gives you that honor, you can be, um, he's Sir Isaac Newton. So maybe you've heard of some people from Great Britain that are Sir um, somebody um, so that they, because they've been, they've given some sort of title honor from the king or the queen. So, all right, that is the end of Isaac Newton. We're going to go ahead and read about another uh, famous scientist here in just a moment. All right, we're going to go ahead and read about Marie Curie. Um, and it says, how an x-ray can change our lives. What is an x-ray? It shows us stuff that our eyes can't see, like bones inside our body. Who invented it? Marie Curie. She was born in a country called Poland, you see. She had curious eyes and her hair was quite curly. Her parents were teachers, so she learned easily. They taught her to read and write very early. In Poland back then, no girls went to college. It was illegal, no matter their knowledge. So we've talked about lots of stories this year, too, of people who um, have had to overcome difficulty to do what they want to do. So girl that can't go to college... She wants to go to college, I bet she's going to figure it out. Let's see. But in Paris, she could. So she traveled to France and quickly was accepted. They gave her a chance. After only three years, Marie earned her degree in physics, a science she loved endlessly. Soon after, she married a man named Pierre. He also loved physics. They had something to share. Marie and Pierre worked together quite closely and discovered some things, two elements, mostly. Both elements gave off radiation. Polonium and radium were quite a new sensation. Radium was risky, but if used the right ways, it could help cure cancer or take an X-ray. Marie became famous, and to her surprise, she and her husband won a very big prize. The Nobel Prize, the biggest they say, Marie's the first lady to win it. Hooray!
And in 1911, she won it again. The first person to win it twice. Quite shocking, oh man. Years later, the First World War arrives. Marie was determined to save many lives. She used little trucks to move x-ray machines to hospitals where the wounded soldiers were seen. Marie is remembered for lots of great stuff. She may have been small, but also quite tough. Today, thanks to her, a girl can have a career and be like Marie, a science pioneer. I love that. And I don't know if you noticed, but everyone in this book, except for her, is a man. So I love that she is represented here. However, we've read so many other stories this year that represent so many groups of people. Um, and I don't think this book quite does it, but we have read so many other amazing stories this year. Um, so that is the end of the Marie Curry one. We have one more that we're going to read together. Um, so we're only reading four of, this, of the ten um, stories of kids who changed the world, those amazing science stories. Um, but I want you to, we didn't study this one, so I want you to see if you can figure out why I chose this one. All right, here is the last story that we're going to read from this book. So if you do want to read this book and see all the rest of the stories, you can find that maybe at your local library. The Kids Who Changed the World, 10 Amazing Science Stories. So the last one we're going to read is about Louis Pasteur, and it says, What Keeps Milk Fresh? So remember, you're trying to see why maybe I chose this one, because we didn't really study about him or any of his topics this year, but maybe you'll see a different connection. Have you ever heard of a thing called pasteurization? It keeps milk fresh and calls for celebration. Its inventor, of course, was Louis Pasteur, who heated things up just enough to stay pure. But how did Louis, this Louis know just what to do? He conducted experiments, more than a few. His discoveries not only help milk stay fresh, but help us stay healthy and get sick much less. A long time ago, Louis grew up in France, and back then people believed that you don't have a chance. If you get sick, then your sickness had to stay in, right there inside, where it had to begin. So, you know, you guys think about lots of things about the medical field and things that have changed over the years. Um, when he was a little boy, they thought if you get sick, the sickness had to stay in, right there where it started. So that's very different than today's thinking because we have different proof and different um, results. But was that really true? Louis thought it was not. Louis thought about it and he thought a whole lot. Louis thought hard and with imagination, he came up with something brand new, vaccination. He proved that if given a weaker disease, someone could avoid a much bigger sneeze. By giving someone a sickness real small, then after that, sickness would not come at all. As, young as a young student, Louis was not very special, but his paintings and drawings were very successful. He went on to study both science and art, and each of those studied, he, studies he loved with deep to heart. So now do you see that connection? I think we've heard a lot in the news this year all about vaccinations and, um, you know, this is who started them. This is Louis Pasteur. Um, which, you know, you maybe didn't think that somebody figured that out. Um, and we've used vaccinations for years, you know. Um, I'm sure some of you have had to get some recently, um, not just for COVID. We have vaccinations for all kinds of things. When I was a kid, they didn't have a vaccination for chicken pox. And I had chicken pox on my second birthday and nobody could come. <laughs> um, we all seemed to have it. So, um, you know, that, that was kind of the start of something in the medical field that has been continue on, continued on to this day. We're going to finish reading about Louis Pasteur. We have one more, one more little section here. It says, Louis became a chemist and a bacteriologist and worked hard. He saw what some scientists missed. Did he care that some scientists laughed at him? No. Louis knew his ideas would win. Louis Pasteur is the father of germ theory. He helped us all understand it more clearly. 
Without his discoveries, what would we do? We would get sick more often. That's true. Our milk, cheese, and juices would go bad much faster. Without Louis, dinner might be a disaster. The idea you have with which no one agrees may be as small as a germ or as fast as a bee. If you have a theory that no one believes, think like Louis, and you will prove what you see. I love it. So I hope that you enjoyed the stories that we've read together um, and they inspire you because, you know, all of these things that we've been studying this year, people discovered them or made improvements on them and they wondered things. And from what I've seen, I have so many of you guys that are amazing kids that want to change the world. So I love sharing these stories with you to give you some more ideas. So I hope that you wonder and enjoy and get out there and try to figure out the answers to your questions. All right, that's it for me. Take care. Peace.